Well, thanks for joining us again. This is Talking Politics in Western Pennsylvania. I'm Bill Merrill, the host. As you are aware, we have a 10-part series uh, talking about the Biden-Harris administration. Um, we've talked about the petrodollar. We've talked about problems with the military. And today we're going to look at Obamacare and what it has done to our medical system. The Biden-Harris administration celebrates an Affordable Care Act's 13th anniversary. That was back in March of 2023. We celebrate the anniversary of the Affordable Care Act today. We even have more evidence that this law has lived up to its name, providing a way for Americans to access quality, affordable health care. I think we're going to show you that that's not true. Let's move forward. Did Obamacare massively increase the cost? This is according to the Washington Post. The cost, whenever it was started in 2010, was $18,000 for medical care. 2023, that cost has gone up to 31000 So I'm still looking at to see what the savings have been. President Obama and the purpose of the ACA was to lower the cost of health care. He did not lower the cost, but instead merely shifted the cost to the taxpayer. When the enrollee qualifies for subsidies, the cost of the health care does not disappear. These costs that being paid by the current taxpayers and future taxpayers who will be paying higher interest rates on our debt. Okay, now once again, this program is to bring out the problems that we're seeing and it's not anywhere good at all. First Lady Michelle Obama, Princeton classmate, is a top executive at the company that earned the contract to build the failed Obamacare website. Tony Towns White, Princeton, class of 85, is Senior Vice President at CGI Federal, which earned the no-bid contract to build the $678 million Obamacare enrollment website at healthcare.gov. CGI Federal is the U.S. arm of a Canadian company. Towns Whitney and her Princeton classmate Michelle Obama are both members of the Associate of Black Princeton alumni. George Shingler, the president for U.S. and Canada of the Canadian-based CGI group. CGI Federal's parent company became an Obama 2012 campaign donor after his campaign gained the Obamacare website contract. As reported by the Washington Examiner in early October, the Department of Health and Human Services reviewed only CGI's bid for the Obamacare account. Okay, just in case you missed it, let me repeat. First Lady Michelle Obama, Princeton classmate, who is the president at CGI Federal, was given the article said she earned it, but the truth of the matter is that she was given a $678 million contract to build the Obamacare enrollment website at healthcare.gov. Can you say quid pro quo or you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours? Okay, we'll move on with this little slide, which I think is very telling. The first thing, if you can't read it there, it says, I hear you spent $678 million on the Obamacare website. Obama says that number has been greatly exaggerated by the right wing. Sure it is. So how many citizens is this plan intended to cover? All $315 million in all 50, 57 states. That was his answer, which is, I find really interesting. So you're telling me that instead of building this site, you could have given each of us $2 million. I wonder if that would have helped. But looks, let's look at it from another aspect.
let's travel back in time. Back to 2010, when Obamacare was signed into law. Here's the scene at the White House. There's President Obama, all set to give his victory speech and tell you how great the Unaffordable Care Act was gonna be. And of course, then Vice President Biden, desperate to get in on the action, bumbles onto the scene as only he can do. Listen to what he says. This is a good Oh, okay then. I'm former Governor Bobby Jindal, chairman of the Center for a Healthy America here at AFPI. Look, I'm not much into swearing, but it turns out that for once in his life, Joe Biden was absolutely right. Passing Obamacare was indeed a big deal. The results are in, and somebody needs to be honest with the American people. Obamacare was a complete disaster for American health care. Or as President Trump said, Obamacare was terrible, very, very expensive, and hurt a lot of people. And a lot of people don't want to admit it because they think Obama was a cool president. Let's take a look at the facts on the very uncool story of Obamacare. First, let's look at the affordability crisis this law caused for families. Remember what Obama promised. Families will save on their premiums. Cut the average family's premiums. Lower your premiums. Reducing premiums. We'll work to lower your premiums. Well, how did that work out? He was always a smooth talker, but here are the facts. Premiums have increased 80%. Total health care costs for a family of four have increased by $12,000 a year. Deductibles have increased over 50%. So was Obama just bad at math? Or was he a slick liar? Don't forget, he also told us if you like your doctor, if you like your health care plan, you can keep it. Obamacare was sold on a lie. It massively increased the cost of health care here in America. Look at this amazing promise that Obama made to the American people. He bragged that Obamacare would reduce the cost of health care, families would save on premiums, businesses would save money, and it would somehow reduce the deficit. All that's great. The only problem is every single word of that was a lie. Other than that, it's fine. The second bad effect of Obamacare may be even worse than the first. The quality of care is decreasing, and it's often harder to get the care you need than it was before Obamacare. We're all now familiar with not being able to get the treatment or the medicine that our doctor prescribes because the bureaucrats at the insurance company won't sign off. They apparently know better than our doctor does. So why is this the fault of Obamacare? Because Obamacare encouraged and caused health insurance monopolies. And by the way, that wasn't on accident. They did it on purpose and they bragged about it. Big companies are making more and more money while Americans spend more on healthcare. And our government has moved the decision-making power out of the hands of families and their physicians and into the hands of faceless bureaucrats. Big monopolies, they're expensive, they're inefficient, and they take away choices. They don't care about you and me. They only care about making big profits. Oh sure, our doctor cares, but he's no longer in charge. The company he or she works for or the insurance that you have, they're in charge of your health care. Not the doctor and certainly not you. Remember when your decision on whether or not to see a doctor was easy? The only question is, are you sick? Not now. Now it's, are you sick? And also, how much will you have to pay? Here's the bottom line. 14 years of Obamacare have put government and insurance bureaucrats in control of our health care. And the health of Americans is suffering because of it. Our life expectancy is shorter than that in other developed countries, even though we spend more and lead the world in medical innovation. We shouldn't stand for this. At AFPI, we believe doctors and patients should be in control in order to have a healthy America. Visit our website to learn more about how we can make healthcare affordable. Take control. Okay, he basically laid out everything I'm gonna be talking about today because of the fact <clears throat> life expectancy in the country has fallen, all right? As you see there, and, and I understand that COVID was a part of this and you know that's that's not a, a major issue as far as I'm concerned right this second because of the fact that 
it was heading down before then, all right? And from 79 years old to 77 in 2020, all right? It dropped further to just over 76 years in 2021. The largest decrease over a two year span since the 1920s, all right? And that's terrible. And by the way, for everyone, blacks, Hispanics, everybody, it has fallen a little bit. What has happened to the medical field? And this is under the hospital CFO report. Do doctors really loathe Obamacare? Of the 20,000 doctors that responded, 46 gave Obamacare a D or F grade, while 25 gave it an A or B. In addition, two thirds of those responding said they did not accept health insurance plans offered through the Affordable Care Act online insurance exchange. 646 hospitals are at risk. That's in the first red line area you see there. And speaking of that, and you know, I'm sure you're aware that Washington Hospital was just brought up by UPMC. Um, they were a company that was in fact one of those hospitals that we're talking about. Um, because of the cuts in, in allowances, doctors have in fact, uh, hospitals too, have lost billions of dollars. And we'll be talking about that in a second. More than 29% of the hospitals are in trouble right now throughout the country. Biden-Harris administration failed liberal policies dealing with medical support. This is from the Heritage. Despite the Biden-Harris administration constant bragging about lowering medical costs, the average premium for a Medicare drug has jumped 46% since they've been in office, as the number of private drug plans fell by 31%, according to the extensive report a senior research fellow in the Center for Health and Welfare. Why are so many doctors quitting? Over 117,000 physicians have left. And that's just part of the 334,000 medical people that have left the field. As you see down in the bottom, overall physicians experienced the largest loss with that 117,000 departure in 2023 that wasn't spread out over 10 years followed by nurse practitioners with almost 53,000 over 53,000 and physicians assistants with almost 23,000 leaving the field Ninth, uh, 2019 was the worst year for US rural hospital closures in a decade according to the Candace reflector since 2010 120 rural hospitals have closed with states in the South faring worse, Texas, Tennessee, and Oklahoma. Kansas, unrivaled rural hospital crisis, 58% at risk of closing, 82% of their hospitals lost money on patient care. Bankruptcies reached a five-year high. According to the report, there are 79 bankruptcy filing in healthcare section in 2023, the highest since 2019, which saw 51 filings. Nearly half of the total healthcare bankruptcy filings in 2023 were in the senior care and pharmaceutical subsector. Like I said, this is, this is devastating stuff. Trinity Health System. Outside of this area, of course, you know, UPMC and Allegheny are two of the biggest, but Trinity is more in the center of the country. Unsustainable losses were forcing hospitals to make heart-wrenching cuts and closures. Anywhere from 53 to 68% of the nation's hospitals will end 2022 with their operations in the red versus 34 reported in 2019. Once again, this is, this is devastating stuff, and they are all pretending that the ACA is still working wonderfully. Obama's robbery of the Medicare to fund Obamacare in one chart for a total of $716 billion, okay? And Clinton, here's what, here's what comment he made. 
Here's what really happened. There were no cuts to benefits, none. President Obama and the Democrats didn't weaken Medicare. They strengthened it. Well, according to the National Review, if Clinton were under oath in Charlotte, this would have been called perjury. And you see the costs there from the $17 billion for hospice care down to the $260 billion in hospital services that they have stolen from Medicare. Five reasons Obamacare is a failure, and we'll go over them real fast. Obamacare has increased the cost of health care and health insurance. Obama increased Americans' reliance on the federal government. Democrats are attempting to increase worker reliance on the federal government by moving them to exchange plans on higher deductibles, lower actuary values, and narrowing networks. On per-person basis, um, Obamacare is far more expensive than anticipated for taxpayers. Matter of fact, I understood, I, I read somewhere, and I don't have the document right now, that the losses that they projected over 10 years was actually had in the first year. Obamacare's expansion is due to a large part of improper Medicaid enrollments. In 2020, improper Medicaid payments totaled $86 billion an increase of almost 21.5%. Most of these improper payments were due to ineligi or eligibility errors due to the Dr. Bla due to Dr. Blaze, anywhere from 2.3 million to 3.3 million are on Medicaid who do not actually qualify. And the last one is Democrats are chipping away at our free market system to impose their health system. Kamala's plan for your health care as she's leading America down the dangerous path. Harris's previous endorsement of Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All plan, a policy he believes could result in total government takeover health insurance. According to Charles, such a move would push the United States towards a single-payer system effectively eliminating private insurance and reducing health care choices. Harris has also previously advocated for taxpayer-funded health care for illegal immigrants, and her health care policies emphasize potential danger of increasing government control and advocating for individual freedom in health care choices. Illegal immigrants leave U.S. hospitals with billions of unpaid bills. And this is from the American Mature American Citizens, or the Association of Mature American Citizens. Uh, $451 billion in annual costs stemming from the U.S. border crisis, a significant portion is going to health care for illegal immigrants. Once again, we're, we're wondering why all of these medical problems are happening in the southern states. And well, that's because illegals coming from South America don't have health care, so whenever they come across, they bring their problems with them. <coughs> the Denver Health, uh, CEO of Denver Health, Donna Lynn, told the reporters that 8,000 illegal immigrants made roughly 20,000 visits to their health system in 2023. The total bill for uncompensated care cost last year to the system was $140 million. More than 10 million of it was attributed to the care for new immigrants. Mark Zuckerberg admitting Facebook was pushed by the Biden-Harris administration to censor Americans' content. In a letter sent to the House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan, the Meta CEO explained, quote, in 2021, senior officials from the Biden administration, including the White House, repeatedly pressured our teams for months to censor certain COVID-19 content, including humor and satire, and expressed a lot of frustration with our teams when we didn't agree. I believe the government pressure was wrong, and I regret that we were not more outspoken about it. Ennis Cantor Freedom is a human rights activist, former NBA player, and he joins me now. Ennis, great to see you, as always. Rings a little hollow to me four years after the fact. What are your thoughts? You know, thank you for having me. I mean, it's good for him that he finally came out and said something, but I think it's a little too late, buddy. You know, this is, to me, this is an election interference and uh, treason. I hear many people saying that this is a crime against humanity. The question is, I actually want to ask this to our audience, does he actually regret it, or is it because he got caught? Um, I think Meta and Mark Zuckerberg should be held accountable 
for interfering in our election. And please do not let them off the hook. They knew what they were doing. And they thought they fully, they can uh, expect to get away with it. Um, I mean, this is complete, complete and direct violation uh, of the First Amendment. And it is unacceptable. Well, the mea culpas didn't stop there from uh, Zuckerberg. He also mentioned suppressing information, speaking of, you know, election interference, about Hunter Biden's laptop. But bigger mm -hmm. picture here, Ennis, what do you make of this general acceptance by the left and the governments that are leftist, if you will, to censor... Okay, once again, I didn't want to get into all these other political things because of the fact that that's not what this program is about. Um, Obamacare is terrible. It was terrible from the very beginning. And I think that it's time that we take the blinders off and realize that um, our health care has diminished. Uh, the doctors, uh, the numbers that are available to help us have diminished. Uh, the nurses and the, and the physician's assistants have uh, greatly diminished. And the fact that, like I said, we, we were told uh, a story and we were meant to believe that this was going to work and it has been proven a failure. We should, I believe, get rid of it. Uh, but that's just my belief. You may have a different. Thank you very much for coming. And once again, we want to thank you. Um, the next program that we have, program four, is uh, lies, damn lies, political lies. You decide. Look forward to seeing you here. Thank you.